So welcome back aliens, I'm Navin Reddy from Thaiskho Learnings and in this video we'll talk about default parameters and named parameters. Again, uh, this is something new in Kotlin which was not in Java. So let's let's try to understand what it what it means. Now let's imagine if you want to calculate uh, interest. Again, uh, let's not go go for this add or max method here. So time in, let's let's minimize this. I don't want to go for that second column. Let's focus only on this this one this window. And let me just remove these two methods from here or two functions and this one also. So what I want to do is I want to create a one more function here and I will call this function as calculate amount. Now again, this calculation doesn't matter what exactly the, what exactly the calculation would be. Let's focus on the concept. So let's say we have a calculate amount met, uh, function which returns the amount with the interest. Example, if I, if I if a person says, hey, I want to know the final amount, so I will use fair. Uh, var and I will I will say hey give me a final amount what will be the final cost now that will be let's say if I call this final amount example uh, you when you pay something on PayPal or when you when you send some money to someone using a PayPal account so PayPal will charge four percent extra right so what I want to do here is I want to let them well let let people know that when when you send me an amount let's say if, if you are sending thousand a hundred dollars to me you have to make sure that you also add the transaction fee which is four dollars how can we do that so in that case uh, when you send an amount let's say if you are sending an amount which is uh, maybe fifty dollars uh, it should return you the value in in dollars again but let's say I want to return in in, in again when you when you say percentage it might be returning in double value let's say I want to return in int and this will accept the amount so the amount would be accepted in amount colon int so this should return the amount in uh, after calculation so what I will do is I will say hey return the amount so return the amount so return the amount by adding a interest so how do you add an interest here again if you know the formula of interest it is you know the amount into into interest divided by 100 but then what I will do here is I will say amount plus into a point I mean 0 0.04 so when I say 4% it is 0 0.04 right and that's it uh, when we, oh, we got this calculation but then this will return this will result in double value right so what I will do is hey I don't want to go for double value so I will give a complete type a complete bracket here and say dot to int now the way you can convert a double value to int in in Kotlin is by using a method called to int so when we have a double value and if you want to convert that into int we say dot to int so this double value here will be converted into int and that's what you are returning so the final amount would be let's let's see what was the answer is so I will say print ln uh, print oh, what's happening so print print ln and I will print the final amount here so let's try to understand what is the output and if I run this code rest like right click this and say run first oh okay so there's one problem let me just remove this because we got some errors in this file as well uh, let me just remove this code from here okay that's very bad let's go back to our Kotlin file Oh, why it's not getting there now yeah let's run this code now let's right click and say run first code uh, first check for first code dot kd and you can see the amount so it is 52 right and that's what the total amount is after the interest right so when you give the total amount I mean the when you give the uh, normal amount plus the interest rate you will get this value which is 52 right so if you are sending $50 to me from PayPal, you have to send 52 because PayPal will cut my $2 there, right? So this is what this is what you do in uh, in uh, on PayPal. But then let's say uh, you are sending some big amount, and then you, we had a discussion. Hey, I let since I know you, I will give you. I will, I will not charge you 4%. I will charge you only 3% extra. So in this case, how do, so I don't want to change this value. I don't want to change this from 0.04 to 0.03 because again, changing the source code is not a good thing every time, right? So what I will do is I will, I will give an option to a user to also send the interest. So I will say comma and you can also send me the interest. So I will say uh, interest and the type of interest will double by because because it would be 0 0.04 or 0 0.03 or 0 0.05 so let's say if i hate someone and still he says hey i want to send some money then of course i will charge him five percent right 
Now you have to change, you have to always send this value. So I have to always send the 0 0.04 and here you will multiply this with interest. Again, I forgot to tell you that in, in Kotlin, when we use double, we have to use capital D. Unlike Java, in Java we use small d, right? In fact, we use small i and small d in Java, but in case of Kotlin, we have to use capital letters for, I mean capital for the, for the, prim, uh, for the data types here. And uh, in fact, these are your, uh, okay, this, are, this, this is your wrapper classes, if you remember, in, in Java. So let's run this code. Let's see what happens now. I'm running this code. And as you can see, we got the answer is 52 as well. But let's say if I, if I have someone and say, hey, you can send me $3, not, you can send me the interest. I will, I will, I will give you interest of $3 or 3%. In that case, you can, you can see this will change to 51. Again, since I'm changing it to int, it is typecasting it, it is removing that dot values. But that's fine. You can send me $51 there, right? But then don't think about this. If you know that most of the time we have 0, 0, 0 0.04, then why you have to specify that? It should be default, right? So what we can also do is we can assign a default value here. So we can say 0 0.04. Now the advantage would be a user may choose not to send this value because if you say if you are going for the default values, why to specify 0 0.04? You can simply you can simply pass you can simply pass 50 and your job is done because when you're passing 50, this will be assigned. And if you are passing some other value, let's say okay, let, let's run the, let's go with this one. Uh, if I run this code, of course, you'll be getting 52 now because we are we have a default interest, which is of 0 0.04. But let's say if I, if, I, if my friend says, hey, I'm sending you some money, so I will charge him 0 0.03. In this case, this 0 0.04, which is the default value, will be replaced by 0 0.03. And let's run this code. And you can see we got 51. So this is called as default parameters. Again, you can have multiple parameters here. Or you can have one, you can have two. So just no, no, just look at it. Look at this. If you're coming from Java background, we know this concept, right? We can have a method with the same name, but different parameters. And that concept is called as method overloading here. Now Kotlin says, don't worry. If you want to pass one parameter, that's fine with me. Uh, it will be assigned to the amount. If you're passing two parameters, then in that scenario, the, the default one will be, will be replaced, right? So if you want to do the same thing in Java, you might have to create two methods, right? One only for amount and one for amount and interest both. So you have to create two methods there. In Kotlin, you get an option of default uh, default parameters where you can assign the value by default, right? So that's the advantage of using Kotlin here. But then I just have one problem. How can you call this? How can you call this in Java? So, okay, example, if I say, hey, I want to call uh, because you cannot pass one parameter in Java, right? Because this is a method which takes two parameters. So what I will do again is uh, I will use a first code, code kt dot. I will call this method calc amount. And if I say control space here, or not here. In fact, it is giving me option there itself, is it? Yeah. So can you see that it is asking for two values? It is asking for amount. It is asking for interest as well. If I specify the amount and if I don't specify the interest, it is giving me an error. It says you have to also mention the interest. So we'll, we'll give a comma and we'll say 0 0.04. So it is compulsory in case of Java when you're sending the value to specify the interest rate as well because this is or this is not optional. But then I want to achieve this, right? I, I may want to send only one parameter. I don't want to send the, okay. I don't want to send the interest. I just want to send the amount. In this case, your Kotlin should create two methods, right? One for the amount and one for the amount and interest both. So you don't have to do that. You can simply use an annotation here, which is at the rate JVM overloads. Now what it will do is your Kotlin code will create two methods of this and it will be done automatically, right? You don't have to think about it. Just write at the rate JVM overloads. It will create two methods, one with amount as a parameter and one with amount and double as a parameter. And this is awesome, right? Example, if I run this code now, I, I want to run Java code now, I will say right click and run main. Uh, okay, okay, I'm not printing the value here. I should I should do that, right? So I will say print, uh, okay, I will, I will do that in the system dot, out dot it's uh, print ln itself just to save some time. Okay. Now, if I run this code once again, uh, you could you can see the output is 72 right it is working if I change if I if I don't want to pass the interest value as this I, I can also also specify the interest value as 0 0.08 let's say if I have someone who, who who may want to go for more interest or maybe PayPal is charging more so you can see we can change the value as well 
So you can pass one parameters, you can pass two parameters, you just have to use this one annotation here, which is JVM overloads, right? Awesome thing, right? So this is about default parameters. Uh, but then, okay, so once we have talked about default parameters, let's minimize this again. And uh, let's come back to this one. Now, Kotlin also provides you one more feature, which is called as named parameters. Now, why do we use named parameters here? It's because, let's say, if you're passing these two values, now sometimes, you know, when you read your code, it looks difficult to understand what is the first parameter and what is the second parameter. I mean, you can see the code here itself, but let's say if you have a very big application and the method you're, 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 the, mention, the function you have mentioned here is someone, somewhere else, how would you know in which, in which sequence you have to pass the parameters? So in that case, if you are writing the name, if you're writing the name of the parameters, it will be easier for you to remember, right? So you can say amount colon, and you have to specify on both the side, you have to say interest colon, uh, sorry, not colon, or is it colon? Expecting a bracket, where is that bracket there? Okay, so I guess it is equal to a what? Yeah, so it is equal to not colon. My bad. Yeah, so we have to mention amount is equal to 50 and interest is equal to 0 0.03, right? The advantage is it is more readable and uh, if you even if you don't know the sequence, that's fine because you can interchange this sequence, okay? Example, I can write interest first. I mean, even if I'm expecting that later in the, in the method which we are defined here, but you can send in any sequence because you are mentioning the, uh, you're, you're mentioning the, uh, the parameter itself. So you're mentioning the parameter name here. So interest would be 0 0.03 and amount is 50. So when you pass the value, it will be going in that particular format, right? So this is the advantage of using named parameters. Again, this is not there in Java. So this code will not work when you write in Java, but then only in this code, it will, it will surely work. So these are the two, two things which are there in, uh, which are there in uh, Kotlin, which are, which is not there in Java. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed. Let's see the output. Uh, let's see the output and you can see it works. So that's it. That's it from this video. I hope you're enjoying this videos. Do like, do share this videos with your friends uh, if you are enjoying it and do hit that like button and keep subscribe. Do subscribe.